the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Uh, you see, this is why we have CRT, the necessity for CRT. Because the CRT is going to determine, based on what you come up with, right. it, it constrains the, the discussion. Because without a CRT, you see, we're free to rumble over all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But once you get a CRT in front of you, right. now, we go, now we're going to compare the CRT with the text. Okay. And I've made a list of things, I've made a list of observations that you should have made. Okay. A list of things that you should have considered in, the, in writing your CRT. Uh, so, so I think it's important that when you look at a particular text, and when they, in this case, we've got Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Right. We are constrained in ourselves now to that text alone. Right. Now, you are free to go and look at it in Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapter 8 so that you get a, a big picture of everything that went on in this parable because there are some subtleties that are in Matthew that are not in Mark and some subtleties in Luke that are not in Matthew or Mark. Right. Mm -hmm. So I suggested that you read it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke to get a big picture of what the parable is really all about. Now, once you've gotten there, that is, that is the text that you're constrained to. Now, what we want to know is what is God saying right here? And from what I got here, and that, there's my statement there, now, spiritual, spiritual ears heard him, the devil stole from them, but you were good ground and produced good fruit. And all you <laughs> have, you get all that out of that text. So now, if you if you understood the instruction, you would have understood that your CRT now is at a much higher level than any detail that is given in the parable itself. Okay, that's why I shot all the way. Did that make sense? So, uh, so, bro, Harper, did you did you did you, uh, you did you understand that that your CRT yes, I did. is going to be like, a, like a, a thesis statement? It is going to be at a much higher level than any detail that's in the parable. Because right. the CRT has to encompass every detail that is in the parable. Right. Right. So it, 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 it's, got a, it's got to encompass, for example, it's got to encompass the sower, yep. the seed, yep. any any obstacles or hindrances that are, in, that are encountered. Yeah. It's got, to, it's got to talk about any of the conditions that prevail. It's got to talk about any threat or any predator. That is that is uh, an antagonistic to what is actually trying to be accomplished. Right. Because I submit to you that in this parable, Jesus is actually trying to accomplish something. Yeah. And what he, basically what he's telling you is, if you if you read the parable and you get the gist of it, what he's really telling you is, what he what he when he says in Mark chapter one. Let me just turn there just so I can be accurate. I don't, don't want to misquote it. You on Mark one? Mark one. All right, I'll bring it up for everybody. After John the Baptist is is uh verse fourteen. One second. Fourteen. Uh -huh. This is what he said. He said, "Now after that, John was put in prison." Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, for, just for the sake of clarity, this is the only gospel that there is. Right. There's no gospel of Paul. There's no gospel of Christ. There's no gospel. No, there's only one gospel. This is the gospel of the kingdom, and that is what Jesus himself preached. Right. And this is what he said. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes. So he is now commencing something that has not existed up until this very moment. 
what, what he is doing now, he is setting in motion something that has been prophesied, that has been ordained, but his time had not yet come. And he's saying, the clock has expired. Now God has begun to initiate the activity necessary to bring into existence the kingdom of God. So what do you think he was establishing in Genesis? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and so was, in, uh, in, in, in harmony with that, the first order of business, if you're going to talk about the kingdom, is repent. Yeah. Right? That, that, that's what I'm saying. Right. Repent. Now, now, you know, that's a kind of very special word, repent, because it, it brings into focus a past history of not only the people that heard Jesus preach, but it brings into focus the past history of the whole of humanity. Yes. Now, I submit to you that this kingdom that Jesus is beginning to preach about is will require that anybody who wants to enter, their first act is to acknowledge the need to repent. Which which is interesting, and I guess that's why I I keep referring back to the, 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 the story was that's one thing Adam didn't do was repent. He, you know, I, I agree with what I agree with what you're saying. I just, I guess I, I keep reflecting back on that because it's just restating that's what the problem was, man. Is he never uh, even repented? We, now, we, the, the only relevance that I see that Genesis has to this uh -huh. is that in the parable of the soul and in Jesus' preaching, all he is doing is addressing. The, the problem yep. that Adam created. Yes, yes, that's right. That, I agree. That's why I that, keep making that, that's, me of that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the connection. So he, he understands that, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he, Paul makes a statement that in Adam, all die. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Hold on a sec. Can I just ask a question right there, then? Go ahead. If there is a problem, doesn't it have to be a deviation from a norm? Woo! I mean, if, if there was something that was manifested as a problem, there had to be something in place initially that was in, in, in right order or something. Okay. So, did, yeah. so okay. the question becomes, did he establish a kingdom at the beginning with Adam? I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there just for, for review. Well, but that's did he actually... Yeah. Established some type of kingdom with Adam prior to the fall. Was that a, was that an example of the kingdom that he that he had in mind? What, what, like does, what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say in verse fifteen? What fifteen? What about fifteen? That, that, okay, that's your, that's your question. Oh, about the way so. In fifteen of four, fifteen of one. Fifteen of one. Okay. Because. Jesus' advent was it a recreation of a kingdom? Because what I, 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 mean, I throw this in there because Israel had at one point in the flesh they had experienced a period in their history where they were the top dogs, and oh, when they were tired, they were tired that they were under, they thought he was going to restore them to that position. But that was the kingdom of man, exactly. Not the kingdom God. Exactly. Now, was that king, remember the first if there was a kingdom that was established that was in right standing with God, was that manifested when he did when he worked with Adam the initial time? Well, let me ask there was you a lot of was that, was that not a kingdom? What was it? What form of government was that when he was when Adam was given to me? Well, let, let me ask you this question. Let me just ask that question, yeah. Jesus said in John chapter five. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Born again, though, right? That's the re that's what we're trying to say to repeat this statement is again. And I know natural birth is talked about, but we also talking about the fall of man. Was that a kingdom? And on top of that, uh Bishop was you remember Brother Addison when when uh Israel said they wanted a king? And and and, they, and he told Samuel, God told Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Because God was the king. 
Mm-hmm. And they rejected him. But listen, oh, man. they want a natural cardinal kingdom. And I mean, that's... let me help you out with something. What you're looking at in the Old Testament is the equivalent to Jesus being present on the earth. Mm. Jesus being present on the earth physically does not constitute the kingdom. The kingdom of God is in you. Yes. And it can't mm-hmm. be in you unless the spirit of God is in you. Right. And it's not possible to have the spirit of God in you until Jesus is crucified, exalted, and poured out the spirit. Yeah, so there is no kingdom until that transpires according to Acts chapter 2. And we agree, I think we agree, Bishop, what you said <laughs> the beginning was that was at was God in Adam? No. You don't think so? Because they was naked when they, they sinned. And I think in that's what the, in the old testament, it bears witness that all men have is the presence of God with them, or the presence of God will come upon them. Yeah. God is not dwelling in anybody. So so question because what type of government did they have then? Right. Prior to the fall. What government did they have in place prior to the fall in the garden? Well what difference does it make if you're in the flesh? It's irrelevant to what kind of government you have if you're still in the flesh. And if men are still in the flesh. But you thought you you would say that they were in the flesh when when they said their eyes open they saw they was naked, were they not would they did they come naked because they sin? Because they are in first cha- in chapter two it said that they were naked and they were not ashamed physically. So something happened to them spiritually when they fell. They, they, they become they, separated from God. Right. So in other words, they were connected to God prior to that. That's all we're trying to say. Well, that's like that's like Satan was connected to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he fell, and he is no longer connected to God. Right. But the point was that they at that point when before they fell, before Satan fell, he was part of the kingdom. Well, so you would you, you understand that, that he, was, he was spiritual though right he was he, was more he wasn't in him. this physical world he, he right he, Adam, he was born spirit man was born out of the dust of the ground and god breathed his spirit into man there you go now once again then where was man where was what was in adam well now you you got to be there over there what was, was in adam the spirit of god no the breath of life he breathed life he breathed life the breath of life is in Adam. Right. Yeah. If he you, had to be. If, so when we if when you cross he, the line yeah. and make that and imply that that's the spirit of God. No, yeah. no. I'm that trying to the, say that what, what I'm saying is that when Adam was made, created, the only thing that gave him and become a living soul was the spirit of God that came into him. Wait, well, listen, listen to the text that you're quoting. It says that God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and what did he become? A living mm-hmm. soul. Did, did he become? Did he become a new creation in Christ, or did he become a living soul? Well, he when you said that, you said is that Adam was a creation that was from the beginning. He was the creation, and he fell. I, he I don't, I don't know what, Huh? He was a physical creation. He is not an eternal creation. No, I agree, but he, well, we don't know that either, Bishop. Was he? Well, we, well, we do know that. Because he said, he said that if you, if you will, if you, you'll die if you eat of this fruit. That implies that if you don't eat of this fruit, you will not die. Well, let me just ask you, let me put it this way. I have no doubt that Adam did not exist before God fashioned him from the dust of the earth and blew breath into him. He did Oh, I agree with that. We agree with that. Okay, so he's not eternal. He did not exist outside of time before creation as the word does, as the Logos does. The Logos is there before anything goes down. And we're not going to, that's not a contest because the, the Logos is the word of God, is God, right? Now, that is the only way for a kingdom to come into existence. The kingdom of God cannot come into existence in any shape, form, or fashion apart from the Logos. And not just, not just being with him like the apostle were. The apostle were with him. 
they had Jesus physically present with him. But Jesus told them, it is expedient for you that I go away. No. It's necessary for I, that I go away because God never intended for you to have me with you. He has always intended for you, for, for you to have me in you. Right. And you can't have Jesus in you physically. So, so I guess the question back, the elder asked the question was, what was the kingdom or dominion prior to the fall of man? That's a shadow. Oh, that is a, that, that's a shadow. That's a figure. That's a representation. That is not the thing itself. So the first Adam was a shadow. Yes. And the second, and last so, Adam. Is, and, so, and so the Hebrew writer tells you that. The Hebrew writer tells you that the law having a shadow of good things to come, but not the very image of the thing. Yeah, but that was referring to the law, right? This was not, Adam wasn't under the law. Well the, only way you could, only, well, the only way you could have a kingdom in the Old Testament was by way of law. Well, well what I'm saying, so was there government? Was there government? Right. Was, I mean, yeah. Because yeah. he had rulership. He had yeah, rulership well, he, over the whole yeah, earth. He, 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 yeah, he was extended to me, so he was delegated to me. Yeah. So, it, it, so from a delegated authority, what form of government was he given? What, what, what form of government was that? Right, it was, and we know, we know, Bishop, we know that that was not a man's government because God established it, not man. Well, 